Hello students, welcome to this study choice webinar about Fontys University of Applied Sciences, ICT department, campus Eindhoven. My name is uh, Leo Maase and I, today I will guide you through this webinar. Um, my technical assistant today is uh, Alina. Um, because of the uh, corona crisis, uh, we have to do this webinar in a totally different environment than what we normally do. Uh, I'm in the neighborhood of Eindhoven and Alina uh, right now is in Yash in uh, Romania. So hopefully uh, we can do this webinar uh, as good as possible, but we already detected some streaming uh, problems uh, with the videos. Um, we, we will do our best and uh, we will guide you through the webinar as best as possible. Okay, let's move on. You have made an application for one of our ICT bachelor programs. Today, we want to give you more information about being a future ICT student here with us. We also will give you information about accommodation and the city of Eindhoven. Please mind that you can always ask your questions online. Hopefully, at the end of this webinar, you can say loud and clearly that this bachelor study program is your cup of tea. This webinar is your study choice check, which is part of the application procedure. You already filled out a questionnaire which will be discussed with you upon your arrival in August uh, with your study mentor. We want to start this webinar with a short movie about an open day here at Fontis we had some time ago. So Alina, please, you can start up the video. Hopefully it works well. We are in the Netherlands, Eindhoven, Pontes University of Applied Sciences. And right now the open day um, takes place and many people are here to see our university. Ja, tot nu toe lijkt me best wel leuk. Ik vind het een hele gezellige school. Uh, er zijn heel veel verschillende soorten mensen aanwezig, dus dat is wel leuk. Je hebt natuurlijk ook heel veel verschillende richtingen, dus dat uh, is dan ook wel een beetje logisch. Ja, het is uh, nogal interessant. Er zijn uh, heel wat mensen die uh, hun verhaal kunnen doen en met vragen kan ik uh, altijd bij hun terecht. Dus de eerste indruk was wel uh, goed. Fontys is great is that you see your end product. So you're not just studying a theory, you can apply your knowledge. And also the international atmosphere is something that attracts most of the students. They're coming from uh, different countries. They have the opportunity to get to know different people with different opinion and uh, different backgrounds. And it's uh, actually uh, super interesting the fact that you can have a really good relationship with teachers so they can help you anytime you need. Nou, in eerste instantie vind ik dat ons onderwijs is gebaseerd op het feit dat wij proberen een veilige leeromgeving te creëren voor studenten. Zij mogen leren wat ze willen en wat ze misschien al kunnen. Of misschien heeft de student wel uh, zoveel ambitie dat hij in een open leeromgeving zijn eigen leertraject kan uitzetten. Het is uh, ja, hard werken hier, maar ontzettend leuk om uh, ja, gave dingen te maken. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Quality could have been a little bit better, but okay, it was manageable. As what I told you, it's a video we made at one of our last open days, and hopefully you got a first taste of being an ICT student at Fontis here in Eindhoven. Let's continue to give you information about the ICT study programs. But first, we want to give you some information about Eindhoven and its accommodation options. The region Eindhoven is located in the southeast of the Netherlands and is known as Brainpause region. We also call it Silicon Valley of Europe 
of course, not for companies like Google and Apple, but instead for companies like Philips, Duff, Fay, Van der Lande, ASML, etc. It is an internationally recognized center of science and technology. The Eindhoven campus, therefore, attracts many international students with a passion for ICT or engineering. After graduation, the region offers students excellent career opportunities in the world of technology, engineering and ICT. Accommodation. Because your next study destination is Fontys here with us in Eindhoven, you also need a place to live. Fontys will help you finding accommodation, but it is you who needs to be very active in this. First, you need to know how it works. Finding student accommodation. Mind that in the Netherlands, we do not have student dormitories on the campus, but student accommodation is offered in the city. That will be student houses or apartments, just like this one, where you have your own study room, sleeping room, and you share kitchen, bathroom, living room, etc., with three or four other students, depending on how big the student house is. Keep in mind, being accepted as a student is important, but taking care of your student accommodation is even more important. So take care of this. To help you, when we have a look at the next slide, um, you see a page, and this page is from our website, practical information, which can be found on the website, as what I mentioned, but also on our Facebook page. Also have a look at this video about student accommodation in Eindhoven. We will only show you part of it to give you an impression how student apartments look like. As you can see, every student has its own bedroom, study room, uh, but you share kitchen, bathroom with other students depending on how big the apartment or the house is. Um, normally, cleaning is done once a week, once in a fortnight, uh, offered by the housing agency from which you rent uh, your room. So here are some impressions of how uh, a student accommodation looks like. As you can see, uh, the rooms are furnished, And normally the student accommodations are uh, in a distance around five to 10 minutes uh, cycling from uh, Fontes University. As what I mentioned in the uh, beginning, um, whenever you have questions related, whatever topic, please ask them when possible, I will give you the answers online or we will do it at the end of the webinar. That depends. Here you have pictures of the kitchen. So as what I uh, mentioned, um, being accepted as a student is important, but finding accommodation is also very important. And during your application process, you will be asked by admin office uh, to fill in a so-called accommodation form. So there you can fill in your data, your wishes, uh, how much rent you want to pay, etc., so that we can, when possible, take care of it. But Keep in mind, you need to apply for student accommodation. If you don't, then you have the risk that there will be no accommodation available. Okay, I think, uh, Alina, we have seen enough related to a possible student accommodation. So I would suggest that we move on with um, with the next slide, which will be 
uh, about our learning methods. Uh, as you can see, we have several topics in this webinar and uh, the main goal is to give you as much information as possible so that you are well prepared on your future stay here with us in Eindhoven. Okay, now we want to focus on the content of the bachelor programs. We offer an ICT, but first information about uh, the different learning modes. In the first year, the program will be offered in the so-called course-based mode. And course-based means an educational mode, which is a combination of lectures with teachers, practical assignments, and group and individual project work. Learning activities are provided in classrooms or so-called OILS, open ICT labs, as we call it. This highly interactive uh, educational strategy provides students with real life ICT experiences where they can apply academic and technical skills and develop their ICT employability. Okay, in the next slide, you can see that Pontus University has links with many companies. Um, from these companies, we get real life assignments for all the projects students are doing, but of course also assignments for internships and graduation internships. But the career days are also a very important uh, activity we do together with our partners in education, as we call them. As you can see, uh, we have many relationships with many companies. I think more than 130 at the moment. And as what I mentioned in the beginning, we are in the middle of Brainport region, center of science and technology. So you may understand there are a lot of companies related to ICT engineering or technology. On the next slide, some information about the degree you will obtain. It's a what we call a Bachelor of Science degree. Um, which is valid all over the world. On the next uh, slide, um, we have some stream up possibilities together with our neighbor university, which is University of Technology Eindhoven. Of course, you know, Pontus is a so-called University of Applied Sciences. But in the Netherlands, we also have research universities, of which two is one. Normally, uh, when students do bachelor programs, they can do it at a UES university, but also at a, at a university, uh, at a research university. But if you want to stream up in master programs, then you normally can only do this at research universities. So that's why we have good relationships with, for example, two but also with other universities in the Netherlands and abroad, where you can do master programs. Okay, the next slide, uh, some practical uh, information. Um, as what I already mentioned, Fontes is a UES university, and one of the most important features of a U UES university is that theoretical knowledge is linked with practical experience broad education you are you are able to tackle all kind of practical uh, assignments which are uh, offered by companies okay the next slide the typical life cycle of ict um, probably you know moore's law um, ict is a very dynamic field which means that in ict everything changes rapidly. That's one of the reasons that why at Fontis here in Eindhoven, we offer uh, ICT in many disciplines, in several tracks. You know? uh, later, in the next slides, we will show you the, uh, the tracks we offer and also the specializations linked to these tracks. So let's have a look at the next slide. Pontus main study programs. Um, you can see them here. 
At the moment, we have five tracks, ICT technology, ICT and infrastructure, ICT and software engineering, ICT and business, and ICT and media design. All bachelor programs uh, have a length of four years, and each year consists of two semesters. Year one, in the first 12 weeks of semester one, you will focus on several subjects and projects related to all these five tracks. ICT software engineering, ICT business, ICT technology, ICT and infrastructure, and ICT and media design. So the first 12 weeks will be the same for all ICT students. At the end of this phase, you make a choice for one of the profiles, for one of the tracks, and you go more in depth during the remaining 10 weeks of the first semester. Okay, the following slide. In the following three semesters, you will get more in-depth subjects and authentic projects related to your chosen profile or track. From the fourth semester, you will or can, it's not compulsory, you can focus on an extra specialization. You can choose from cyber security, smart mobile, applied data science, game design, management and security, ICT innovation and academic preparation, and the latest specialization we offer is artificial intelligence. Okay, in, at the next slide, you can see um, that, let me see, at the end of the first or second year, you can decide what your ICT profile will be. In the third year, semester five, as you can see, you will do your first internship for five months. Also in year three, you will do your minor program. More info about the minor in a few minutes. In the fourth year, you first do a specialization semester in your ICT profile or track. The last semester of the fourth year will always be your graduation semester in a company, including thesis writing. All classes are offered in English. The official degree, as what I already mentioned, will be a Bachelor of Science degree. The study program, ICT, has currently a total number of around 800 international students. How many hours a week you will need to spend on your studies? The general workload is around 40 hours a week. And in the first year, the division is around 20, 24 hours of lectures, classes, around 20 hours on projects, assignments, self-study. And in year two, three, and four, the number of classes will be less, but more projects and assignments. Mind that the first year is what we call selection or exploration year. As a general rule, you need to obtain at least 75% of your study points or credits to be allowed to continue with your second year. At ICT department, it works a little, a little bit different, I will tell you in a minute. But keep in mind this 75% rule because that's the general rule for all university programs in the Netherlands. So that means that uh, you have to obtain 45 out of 60 study points or credits because that's the maximum uh, amount you, you can achieve per academic year. How does it work with credits? Each subject, assignment or project is linked with a number of credits, normally around three, four or five credits. You will get these credits when you score at least a passing grade higher than 5.5 for each subject. At the end of semester two, you need to have obtained at least all the credits of semester one to be allowed to continue the ICT study programs. So, as what I told you, for ICT, we have a little bit different system. So when you start the program in September 
at the end of the first semester, you can have obtained 30, 30 credits. That's the maximum. When you have 30 credits, no problem, you can stream up into semester two. However, in semester one, when you have not achieved 30 credits, let's say you have around 20 or less, then we offer you the opportunity to redo the first semester. And then the rule applies that at the end of the second semester, so somewhere in July, you need to have obtained the 30 credits of the first semester to be allowed to continue with the rest of your study program. Hopefully that's a little bit clear. Okay, let's have a look at the different ICT profiles we offer here at Fontis ICT Eindhoven. The first profile is the Bachelor ICT and Business. Nowadays, business processes make use of ICT more and more, and business IT specialists know how to apply, how to apply ICT in companies, organizations, to achieve their objectives. A business IT specialist knows how to analyze organizations and business processes, but is also able to give advice on solutions and to transfer these solutions into design and also important to implement these designs into IT applications. Um, at the meantime, I have a look at the question section, but so far, let me see, are there questions coming in? Um, how does support work for Dutch students wanting to, enroll, wanting to enroll into the English course? Okay, let's briefly answer this question and then I continue with uh, the ICT and business profile. So this question is apparently from a Dutch student um, who wants to enroll in the English course, in the, in the course-based program, as we call it. Um, what you need to do is, you apply through studylink.nl and then you will be automatically uh, contacted by the admin office and then they will tell you what you need to do to enroll for the English course, for the English program. In fact, it's exactly the same as uh, when you want to enroll for, for a Dutch program. So from that point of view, uh, there isn't a lot of difference. Hopefully, this answer uh, is really the answer to your question. Okay, let's, but, but what I want to indicate uh, to everybody, when you have questions, ask them, because that's one of the functions of this webinar to, to give you as much information as possible. All right, okay, let's continue with the ICT and business profile. What will you do in this profile in the first year of study? As what I already mentioned, in the first semester, the program is the same for all ICT students as discussed. IT innovations make that companies have to adapt their business process. The goal in most cases is to reduce cost or time. For example, a supportive system for patient administration in a hospital. Standardized system to report problems with your car or a banking system you can use from your phone. Companies want to be able to steer their new IT implementations, being able to use them efficiently and to gain new insights within their process. For example, when a supermarket introduces a new scanning system for their products, they can save on employees' costs. On the other hand, the customer is now charged of scanning the products. The question at hand, is this really a beneficial change? With the gathered data and a process analysis, the ICT and business expert is able to determine whether this is true and give a funded argument. Being able to see the whole picture of the organization, collecting and organizing the data and analyzing the process is what you will work on during the upcoming period. You will develop yourself into professional data scientist. In the second year of study, 
subjects are given like international business orientation, management, economics, international marketing, export operations, but of course also ICT related subjects like SQL, ERP and programming C Sharp for business. For more information about the content of the program and the subjects given, I refer to our website fontes.edu slash ICT. Okay, let's move on with the next profile, Bachelor ICT and Software. This four-year English taught bachelor study program leads to the Bachelor of Science degree, as what all profiles do. What will you do at ICT and Software Engineering? In this profile, you will learn how to develop complex software systems. At the start of the program, it's all about the basics of programming. With the basic programming concepts, you will start writing very simple software applications, for example, Windows applications. During the course, it will become clear that software engineering is more than just programming. You will learn different techniques to create software applications in a structured manner. It is important that you practice a lot in the orienting phase and this way develop your analytical skills, which are essential for a software developer. Enthusiasm and perseverance are also important ingredients to become a skilled software developer. You will use the acquired programming knowledge to create meaningful products. In the advanced phase of the first semester, you will, you will make a start with developing software applications using object-oriented design and implementation con concepts like UML use cases. The first year of studies. Um, students who choose ICT and software engineering are offered theoretical subjects and practical laboratory training in several subjects, including programming in C Sharp, computer systems, databases, internet applications, but also communication aspects. Think of project management. In the second year of study, in depth software engineering subjects are given, like programming in C or Java client server applications and operating systems. Okay, uh, I have a look at questions, but so far I don't see more questions coming in. I'm waiting for them. Okay, let's move on in the meantime to the next profile, which is about ICT and media design. Oh, sorry, I'm making a mistake. I see the next one is it's about ICT and technology. Sorry for that. Um, ICT and technology is the profession of developing software for other platforms than standard PCs. These platforms, probably you know them, we call them embedded systems. They often have a strong link with the physical world. This profile is an introduction to, pro to programming on an embedded platform, such as Arduino. You can connect different types of sensors and actuators to this platform. You can use these sensors to get information about the outside world and use actuators to influence the physical surroundings. This interaction requires you to make assumptions about the physical world and confirm your results with live tests. What will you do at ICT and technology? I already mentioned several times, the first part of the program in the first semester, it's identical for all ICT profiles. Um, from the second semester, you must think of subjects like programming in Java, programming in C++, object-oriented design, embedded software, client-server applications, and operating systems. 
Okay, let's move on to the next profile, which is about ICT and media design, which is about the design and development of the relation and interaction between humans and media technology. You will learn to communicate with users, customers, develop new concepts, create prototypes and UX visual designs. What will you do at ICT and media design? It's about coming up with ICT-based media concepts, transferring stories to your goal audience and developing applications that are meaningful to your target audience. The core part of this profile is for you to learn how to design for the user experience. So you will be able to develop and implement interactive prototypes in an iterative process for the target users based on trends and developments. You get the opportunity to experiment and develop your technical and very important also your creative talents. In the first semester, in the first 12 weeks, the same for all students. During the second semester, you will learn to build a brand for a musical act and design and develop suitable media products. For instance, website, visual designs, social media, video, stage visuals, etc. In the second year of study, as what I mentioned before, each year consists of two semesters. In semester three, uh, the topic will be about technology-driven innovation. You will learn to innovate with technology as a starting point. You will learn to experiment with different technologies and train yourself as a media designer to create multiple different products for clients. Common subjects in semester three are user interaction, data visualization, storytelling, and media installations. In semester four, the topic is human-driven innovation. In this semester, you will learn to innovate with users as a starting point. Based on a briefing from a client, you will develop an innovative, interactive media product. Previous example projects are, how can we enhance the existing experience of a visit to an e-bike showroom with the help of digital tools? or design an interactive sporting infrastructure for the city of Eindhoven. Okay, our last profile we offer here at Fontis ICT Eindhoven, it's about ICT and infrastructure. ICT and infrastructure is about being able to manage the existing IT infrastructure in all its facets and being able to design and realize a new infrastructure. This concerns both the technical side, network, server environment, environments, clouds, IT environments, security, and the business side, agreements, costs, privacy considerations, organizations, etc. ICT infrastructure is understood to mean the totality of IT resources that handle the processing, storage, and transport of digital data. In the second semester, you will become acquainted with the basics of IT infrastructure and learn to develop a secure network environment. Example of a project in the second semester, surviving the internet project. It's about designing and setting up a server and its environment and testing them extensively before use and actual implementation. Subjects you will be involved in are basic networks config configuration, server configuration, basic security, testing for operation and use in practice. A nice project is the cloud project setting up a secure cloud environment for a customer using scripting and apis to link manage and monitor functionalities subjects you are involved in are linux and windows servers technology 
OSI layers and network protocols. One technology, scripting, command line, Python, API programming, databases, business considerations for cloud choices, security aspects, ITIL processes, and many more. Okay, hopefully so far, I have given you some basic information about the content of the different profiles we offer. As what I mentioned before, uh, as a student uh, from the second semester, you should choose one of these profiles. But you can always link specializations to your profile. And that's our next slide. Specializations we offer. I already mentioned them. You can choose one and even sometimes students choose two specializations next to your profile. However, this is not compulsory. You can also decide, for example, as an, a software engineering student, that you want to continue all your learning materials in this profile. But as what I mentioned before, laws, Moore's law, <laughs> sorry for that, ICT changes rapidly, so that's the reason why we want to bring you in contact with as many ICT disciplines as possible. Specializations are normally chosen in semester four. Okay, another aspect, as you have seen in, in our semester overview, overview, that's the minors. Some examples are given here. These are minors offered at Fontis ICT department. So we call them our own minors. But as a student, you also have the opportunity to choose a minor, maybe at another university uh, within the Netherlands or even abroad. That's up to you. Um, as a general rule, we can say that normally students choose minors that are linked to their majors, to, to their profiles. But it's quite possible that you as a student want to choose a, a minor that's not linked to your profile, that, that you want to do something totally different. To give you an example, um, an ICT and software engineering student meets uh, a Spanish girlfriend and they decide that after graduation they want to move over to Spain which I can understand because the climate is much better of course um, but for that reason uh, the student wants to learn Spanish for for one semester okay that student might choose then a minor in Spanish language uh, to improve his Spanish knowledge so for you as a student, you are completely free in the choice of your minor. Okay, um, what do you learn? I mentioned before, we are a University of Applied Sciences and one of the main characteristics of all programs, doesn't matter what program, one of the most important features is that theory is always linked with practical experience. For that reason, we offer, for example, also two internships. So two semesters, you work and study in a company. Overall, what do you learn? In fact, what you learn can be explained in three pillars. The pillar knowledge, the courses, the pillar skills, how to implement your knowledge, and the pro professional approach and the professional approach is always linked to competencies and very important competencies for for all ict students are uh, analyzing designing research testing developing um, probably you know that um, us universities normally are state-funded universities and all programs, all bachelor programs uh, offered at these universities have to go through an accreditation system. And the uh, competencies uh, are an important factor in uh, finding out whether a program is 
uh, doing well. Uh, and when a program is doing well, it will achieve a so-called positive accreditation. Probably you already found out that our ICT programs have been accredited with the predicate excellent. So that's, of course, something we are very proud of. Okay, in the next slide, we want to show you some of the professions uh, ICT uh, degree students normally take up after graduation. Uh, so here you have some examples. Um, yeah, depending on your chosen profile, you may think of ICT jobs in management, architecture, uh, analysis. Uh, yeah, here we mentioned some web analysis, ICT service managers, um, management organization analysts, uh, system analysts, IT business analysts, etc. But of course, also typical ICT professionals like software developers, architects, digital web designers, web entrepreneurs, etc. In the next slide, we want to pay some attention to after graduation options. Um, I already mentioned a few times, we are in the middle of Brainport. Um, a lot of our students, also international students, after graduation, uh, they find jobs, well-paid jobs as IT specialists in one of these companies. So that's an option where students make use of a lot. Uh, but of course, you also have the option, as what I mentioned before, to stream up in master programs, for example, um, uh, the, the master programs uh, you can do at University of Technology Eindhoven, which is uh, our major, uh, our neighbor here in uh, Eindhoven. But because our programs have been officially accredited, they, they can be used uh, at all universities uh, uh, all over the world. So whenever you have the plan to stream up in master programs, you can do it, in fact, everywhere. Where to find a lot more information? I already mentioned uh, our website, Fontes Edu. It says here ICT programs, but uh, if you type in fontes.edu slash ICT, you can also immediately go to our websites. Of course, you can also go to our social media channels, Facebook. Um, our Facebook page is, um, as you can see, Fontes Technology and Business. So there you can also find a lot of information uh, which is um, generated by our own students so that you can also find out how it works in the city of Eindhoven with the programs, etc. cetera. Um, the next slide, hopefully it works. It's a video again. It gives you, uh, let's say, a short impression of video of, of student life here in Eindhoven. There are some students who, who tell you a few things about how they experience life in Eindhoven. So maybe Alina, you can start to play the video. Hopefully it works. I do believe Eindhoven is charming. It has its appeal. I think it's a city for foreigners, that's for sure. And it's a city for innovation. That's my first impression. It's a very innovative place. Um, it's very focused on technology and it feels like home for me now. I live by the stadium and I always hear people chanting and everybody is so dedicated to the city. They're really proud of their own Brabant. Multicultural, one in plena viata. And Hazele. Okay, it was manageable, um, but okay, hopefully it has given you uh, a small impression of uh, student life here in Eindhoven. Um, let me see, we are coming now uh, at the question part of this webinar. Uh, let me see, I will have a look at the questions. Um, 
what are English requirements for being accepted as a student? Uh, that depends, but for most students, for most international students, by the way, so I'm not talking uh, about uh, Dutch students who have taken a HAVO or VWO education, because then you are exempted for uh, the English requirements. But for most international uh, students, international students requirement is that you need to have an IELTS score of six or a TOEFL score of 80. Of course, there are more English requirement standards and uh, you can read about this on our website. Um, do you have Dutch classes in the curriculum? The answer is yes, a little bit, but I can already tell you because this is becoming more and more important because a lot of students after graduation, they, they want to find uh, jobs in the Netherlands. Um, so for that reason, we are thinking of, um, of offering more Dutch classes, uh, not only in the curriculum, but also outside the curriculum. Um, let me see how many students are there in a group. Um, yeah, normally it, you have to think about 20, 25 students, uh, but sometimes you also have um, assignments in uh, what I mentioned, the, the oils, uh, the laboratories. Uh, there it's also possible that you will have to do projects with smaller groups or when you have um, let's say lectures with, with, with more than, than, than 30 students. But normally you are in a group of around 20, 25 students. And these students are in fact coming from everywhere, international students, but also Dutch students. Um, let me see another question. Do I need previous ICT knowledge to be successful as a student? Officially the answer is no. So when you have, um, an official um, recognized secondary school certificate, which gives admission for our university programs, um, then you don't need to have previous ICT knowledge. But of course, we want you to have uh, ICT interests. Um, and how to find out about that, that's what you have to decide upon. Uh, what are your hobbies? Um, are you really interested in uh, what's going on in ICT? That's also part of this study choice check, what we're doing. So to make it very clear to you that the choices you make are really essential for being a good ICT student. So that's really very important that you have to find out yourself. Okay, and hopefully by this webinar, we have given you uh, let's say tools, information to find out by yourself, okay, is this what I want? Is this my cup of tea? So that's really very important to find out. So for that reason, it's great that you joined this webinar uh, to help you in finding out, is this what you're looking for? Um, I'm coming with a friend. Can we live in the same apartment? Um, actually, the answer is yes, but as what I mentioned before, uh, uh, finding accommodation is really very important. You have to, to pay uh, a lot of attention to it. And one of the things you need to do then is when you fill in the accommodation form, clearly indicate the name of your friend uh, so that we can uh, take care of this. Um, yeah, how many days per week do we get classes projects? Yeah, this is a full-time education, as I already mentioned. You need to spend at least 40 hours a week. So normally classes and uh, assignments and projects are scheduled from Monday till Friday, uh, let's say roughly speaking from, from nine till four in the afternoon. Uh, another question, will I get help in finding internships in the third and fourth year? The answer is yes, you will get help for that. You will be prepared um, how to find assignments. Um, you will be prepared how to do interviews with the companies uh, when they offer uh, assignments, which is quite common in the Netherlands that companies offer their assignments on their websites. 
Okay, then you apply for it. They will invite you for an interview. So you will prepare for that, how to do this. Um, so the answer to this question is yes, you will get help in finding internships. Uh, are there sporting facilities? Yes, we share a huge sporting center with our neighbor university, as I mentioned, University of Technology Eindhoven. There they have a sporting center where our students can make use of as well, where you can do more than 70 different sports and they are open seven days a week. Uh, do I need to pay extra for the minor and specializations? No, that's all part of the uh, program. Uh, so you don't need to pay extra for that. Do I need to find accommodation by myself if I want to do my minor abroad? The answer is yes, but then you will be helped by the, the partner university offering this minor. But officially you need to to take all the actions so that you get accommodation there. What type of laptop do I need? I can tell you, uh, you don't need to have a special laptop with a lot of requirements. Let's say an average laptop will do. And more information about this can also be found on our website. Is math an essential subject? So mathematics at ICT and software engineering or the other profiles? Um, this is a delicate question. Officially, uh, mathematics, it's not an official requirement, but we can tell you that students who want to choose profiles like ICT and software engineering or ICT uh, technology, my advice is that um, it's good to have mathematics in your secondary school um, uh, classes because I think it will help you a lot. Um, how many exam sessions do I have during the first year? Um, as what I told you, uh, one academic year consists of two semesters and each semester uh, consists of two periods, two blocks. And at the end of each block, you might have some exams. So uh, in total, you have four periods, four blocks. So at the end of each block, exams might be planned or project evaluations or uh, assignments or whatever um, let me see can i also do my internships in my home country or abroad the answer is yes if you can find assignments that fulfill university requirements then you can also do your internships in your home country or in another country and uh, what I already mentioned during the webinar, that also applies to the minors. And you can also do the minor program abroad. Uh, how much is the average rent of a student accommodation? You have to think of around 425 to 450 euros a month. That's the, uh, the general or the average rent you have to think of. Keep in mind that um, as an international student, we help you with finding uh, accommodation, but in the end, it's your own responsibility. And when you get um, accommodation offered by Fontes, you also have to sign a, a rental contract. That, and that contract is normally for, for one year. And after that year, you have to find your accommodation by yourself. But of course, you understand you are a student then here in Eindhoven, uh, your network will grow, and then it, you, you know how it works to find your own accommodation. Um, can I have side jobs? Uh, the answer is yes, it's up to you. But keep in mind, as what I also showed you in, in the webinar, the first year is what we call selection year. In the first year, you really have to, to get, uh, I mentioned around 75% of credits, but which is a little bit different system at ICT, but that's quite a lot of credits you need to achieve. So you have to spend a lot of time on study activities. So um, that's what you have to keep in mind. So my personal advice to students is in the first year, concentrate on your study program and don't take up side jobs. But of course, that's, that's up to you. 
Um, then another question I see here, do I get salaries during my internships? The answer is normally yes, you will. It depends on the company. There, there are companies that pay uh, around 800 euros uh, per month, but there are also companies that only pay 300 euros. So it depends on the company and, of course, on the type of uh, assignment you are doing. Yeah. Normally, we say the more uh, the more salary you get, uh, the more difficult uh, uh, the assignment is. Okay. Um, I'm now asking Alina. Alina, do you have also some more questions coming in? Let me see. Oh my God, I cannot read that. Um, this, let me see how does support work for Dutch? I have a problem here that I cannot see the questions anymore. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Questions. Ah, uh, now I see. For the point system in semester one, is there a safe zone like 25, 30, or is just no? Indeed, there is a safe zone. Uh, so, uh, as what I mentioned, um, uh, when you start in September, in the first semester, you can gain um, 30 credits. Uh, you have in the first semester you do an orientation on all the five profiles and normally at the end when, when you do all these profiles well you will get the 30 credits and uh, at the end of the first semester the exam board will come together and then they discuss each individual student and then there is a kind of safe zone uh, but you cannot exactly say uh, this safe zone can be expressed in credits yeah? It depends on uh, how did you perform, what have you been doing. Um, that's that's the way how it normally is assessed. Let me see. Can we see a record of this webinar when it's finished? Yes. So this uh, this webinar will be recorded. Uh, it will take a couple of days, uh, but then uh, we will put it on on the ICT website, so fontes.edu slash ICT. And then, of course, you can uh, you can read or uh, you, you can see it again. Uh, don't forget, whenever you have questions, send them to ICT and engineering, so and A and D, so ICT and engineering at fontes.nl. That's where you can send your questions to. Um, do we have more? Can you say a little bit about financial aids and scholarships? Um, for European students, so when you come from one of the 27 Schengen countries, uh, you can make use of the loan system. And for that, I refer you to go to the duo.nl website, duo.nl, and there you can read a lot about different types of loans you can get from the Dutch government uh, to finance your study program. For non-European students, we offer uh, partial scholarships. And so, you know, a scholarship and a loan are two different things. Uh, Non-European students, when they want to study at uh, a Dutch university, they have to pay the high tuition fees. And for that reason, uh, we offer them partial scholarships. You can read a lot about these scholarships and, of course, also about the loans on our website. And whenever you have questions about that, please ask us your personal questions and send them by email. Let me see, do we have, has the coronavirus 
affected the admission procedure? That's a good question, of course. Um, the positive news we got today from the Dutch government is that the situation in the Netherlands is becoming more stable. Um, at this moment, um, schools, universities, etc., are closed till the 6th of April. Um, around that date, we will have to find out what will be improved. And it will probably go step by step. Um, so far, for the admission procedure, nothing has changed. Yeah. So um, that means uh, you can still do your application in StudiLink. Uh, you have your own to-do list. That's also my strong advice to you. Um, uh, continue your application process. Yeah. Uh, continue your application for accommodation. So at this moment, um, the situation, so it's today, it's the 25th of March. Uh, so we're talking about an intake end of August. Uh, so, so far, no extra measurements have taken and nothing has changed the application procedure so far. But of course, when it changes, when it will change, then we will let you know. Um, let me see. Uh, are the other students living on the apartment are going to be also from Fontes? That's possible, but um, um, as what I told you uh, in the webinar, uh, student accommodation is in the city and student accommodations are offered by so-called uh, uh, housing associations. And um, in Eindhoven, we have uh, three universities. It's Fontes University of Applied Sciences, it's uh, University of Technology Eindhoven, and it's the Design Academy. Uh, so, it depends. Um, so it's quite possible that in one apartment there are students from Pontus, but there can also be students from uh, from the other universities. Uh, let me see. Do we have more questions? There was a question about uh, master programs. Um, it's even possible that you do your bachelor program at Fontis and at the same time you, you already start up your pre-master program while you're a student at Fontis. Normally uh, this is done for uh, students who are excellent um, because you understand this is a huge extra workload uh, and normally students start doing this from the third semester. So the answer is, is, is yes, that's possible, but it's mainly uh, for uh, the so-called excellent student. And you are an excellent student at the end of the first year when you have obtained uh, 60 credits. Do I have more students? You know, it's quite difficult because I only... After the first year, do we have to obtain at least 75 of the ECs again? No. Um, uh, so the first year is the selection year. So there you have this um, high threshold of this 75% rule, which is a little bit different at ICT, as I explained. Um, but when you have obtained the first year, you will get your first certificate. It's called the propodeutic certificate. And after the first year, it's, it's, there is no rule like 75% anymore. So then it's up to you uh, how much time it will take to, to obtain your bachelor degree. Of course, we hope that you will do it within four years. Yeah. But there are some students for, for whatever reason who, who will need some extra time. 
Let me see. I think I got so far all the questions. Um, am I right, Alina? Because I can't see them, see any more. If I could switch, oh, I hear another. Hello, I would like to know if I could switch between programs during the first year. For instance, let's say I'm in ICT in business and I realize it doesn't suit me, so I want to go to ICT media design. Is this possible? Yes, this is possible. Um, that's in fact one of the main ideas in the first year that you can still make a switch if you want to. It's also possible in the second and even in the third year, but then probably you have to catch up certain subjects. But in, in the first year, especially, um, it's quite possible to change your profile. So let me see, because now, Another question, can a student work and do the master program at the same time? Oh, that's becoming very special. So then you're doing your bachelor program at Fontis. Uh, you're doing your master or your pre-master and also get a side job. It's a hell of a job, I would say. But it's all up to you, of course. Yeah, also a question here about uh, Dutch language. That's um, what I already briefly mentioned. So there is some Dutch uh, within the curriculum. Also one of the colleagues is doing that uh, on Friday afternoon. Uh, we are thinking of how to improve this uh, inside the curriculum or outside the curriculum. But it's for all international students somehow important to keep in mind that when you're a student here with us, everything is in English. Uh, that's no problem. Um, but it's good that you also learn a little bit of Dutch. Okay, it's um, a couple of minutes past five o'clock here in the Netherlands. Um, I've seen there have been a lot of attendees. Um, I think I have gone through all questions. So I think it's time uh, to say goodbye. Uh, and as what I mentioned, whenever you have questions, please get in touch with us because that's the most important thing that you know what you may expect uh, if you will be a student here with us at uh, ICT department at Fontes University in Eindhoven. For now, I want to thank you for your attention. Wish you all the best, especially in these strange corona times. Keep healthy, keep safe, and hopefully we will meet again somewhere end of August. So I'm gonna say goodbye now.